going everybody? Welcome to Dark Souls 3. I have been killing this tutorial boss many, many times with each different starting class and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now if you're new to Dark Souls you might think that choosing a starting class is very important. It's not really. Once you get through the initial first few areas you'll be customising your character exactly how you want it to be. Plus, later on in the game you'll actually be able to respec your stats, but there are still a few things to keep in mind when you're selecting your starting class, and also I kind of just wanted to test every starting class on Udex Gundir. So what I did is make 10 characters for the 10 different classes, and I played with all of them up until the first boss. So which class do I think is best for a beginner? Okay, so these are the top 3 classes for beginners in my opinion. Either a knight, a herald, or a warrior. The knight and warrior are pretty simple, they're just both great for tanking damage. The knight as you can see has the most poise out of any class at 21, has a shield with the second highest stability at 48, oh if you're wondering which class has the most stability it's the cleric at 50, but anyway the knight also has the highest starting vitality at 15. Now vitality is the attribute that lets you wear more heavier gear your equipment load, but it also improves your physical defence. I think you can see how this build will be fairly forgiving to a newcomer, is packing a lot of defense. And also it also starts with a longsword, which is a great quality weapon that has a really functional moveset, perfect for any situation really. I'm just going to say here that I'm going to use the knight personally, but for a different reason. I'm going to use it for stat efficiency. Once you know exactly what final build you want to make, especially for PvP fighting against other players, then you can work out which starting class will give you the least wasted stats. This is basically how people who are very experienced at Souls games will choose their starting class, but I'll get to that in a minute. We covered the knight and this is the warrior. This class is just a strength based savage. As you can see it starts with 16 strength, has the most powerful starting weapon, a battle axe, and has the highest health at 14 vigor. In fact the knight, warrior and herald all start with some of the highest health out of all the classes, which obviously is quite a big reason as to why they're the top 3 for beginners. Ok so with the warrior you're just going to be blazing through enemies because you do so much damage early game. If you two hand the battle axe, do the war cry weapon art for an extra damage buff, it's unlikely that you'll die before your opponent does, let's just put it that way. I think I killed Udex Gundir the quickest with this build, uh, which isn't really surprising given what we just said. This build really packs a damage output. Alright and now for the third one, the Herald, which I would classify as a hybrid starting class. In fact I put the Herald and Assassin starting classes under the same sort of bracket or category. What I mean by this is they're both kind of their own thing, but they have complementary castings as a backup. The Herald starts with a kite shield and a spear, but also has a heal spell with a talisman to cast it. But it's not a cleric, that's a different class, so that's why I'm saying it's kind of more of a hybrid. The Assassin is similar in that it starts with an Estoc, but also a sorcery called Spook with a staff to cast it, but again, it's not a sorcerer, it just has sorcery. Spook is pretty cool by the way, it makes it harder for enemies to detect you, but more importantly it nullifies fall damage. And I tested it a couple times and it really seems to completely nullify non-lethal fall damage. I might have to test it more just to be sure, but if so, that's really good. So yeah, back to the Herald, it starts with a spear and a shield. Now that's a really safe combo. Plus, the shield is a 100% block shield, and as I said, you have a heal miracle, which is important because early game you only have, what, uh, 3 Essence flasks? Now the cleric, on the other hand, starts with a better healing miracle, it can heal almost all its health in one casting, while the herald only heals a bit of health at a time. But that's a side note, obviously you'd expect the cleric to be better at using miracles anyway. So yeah, if you're a beginner, the herald would work great, especially if you're looking to try out spell casting. If not, try the knight or the warrior, whatever you do, just don't pick the thief. I would definitely say that the Thief is the hardest starting class to use. All you have is a Dagger, or a Bandit Knife, which obviously does very low damage, unless you're great with parry and backstab timings, which if you're a beginner you're probably not, although it does have a bow as well. It's the only class to start with the bow actually. It's also the only class that can quick step or dash using the Bandit's Knife weapon art. Such a cool move. It's so good for positioning yourself behind enemies for a backstab, uh, but again, that's a move that takes a bit more skill to use. I found this starting class the hardest to use against Udex Gundir. He defeated me a fair few times. There is something else to consider in the Thief's favour though. It is the class that starts with the highest luck stat at 14. And if you think about it, early game is the point at which you want to be getting the best drops possible from enemies. All the armour and weapons and that good stuff. And if you have a high luck stat, you will have the best chance at getting those drops. And then once you get to mid or late game, 
you can just respec once that option becomes available to you and swap the points in your luck stat to something else more useful since you will have already gotten the gear you need. So I guess that classes are still fairly balanced, you know there's pros and cons to everything. The other two builds which I thought were pretty difficult to use were the Sorcerer and the Deprived to an extent. For the Sorcerer you really rely on your magic attacks only at the start in my opinion, which is fine if you're good with your spacing and timing. It's basically because it has a Mail Breaker as its weapon, which is just pathetic. I think it does the least amount of damage out of every starting weapon, but to be fair, all this means is you really just need to two hand your staff and go to town with magic. The weapon art for the staff is called Steady Chant and it buffs the staff as you can see. This increases the strength of your sorceries by quite a significant amount. I tested it a bit here, you can see the differences between the damage when it's buffed and when it's not buffed, so definitely something to keep in mind. If you're about to fight a boss or a powerful enemy with castings, make sure to buff your staff before you start the fight. Another thing I tested was whether the damage from the staff increased during melee attacks, and it seems to. Hitting an enemy without the buff active did 19 damage, hitting an enemy with the buff did 24 damage. I know that's really low damage anyway, but honestly that's about the same damage the Mail Breaker does, so yeah, if you pick this build, just go pure sorcery, I would. The other two primary casting builds are the Cleric and Pyromancer. Now something I didn't realise until very recently is that the Cleric's Chime and the Pyromancer's Flame each have weapon skills. The Chime has Gentle Prayer, which makes you recover health slowly over a period of time, as opposed to its main use, which is the quick normal heal spell. So this means even when you have no healing spells equipped, like maybe you just have a load of Lightning Faith attack spells, as long as you have the Chime on you, you'll always have an extra healing option, even if it's not that good. The Cleric's normal heal, like the actual heal spell it has equipped, uh, uses more focus points obviously, but of course it's a lot better. The Pyroflame has Combustion as its actual weapon skill, so every Pyromancer will be able to use Combustion at any time. The range of Combustion does seem to be kind of crap this time around though, but even so, Combustion, plus the ability to chuck high damage fireballs around in the early game, make the Pyromancer pretty solid, and the Cleric is a fairly safe bet as well, just because of all the extra healing potential. Although what the heck is that thing on his back? The Mercenary has probably the most stylish looking weapon of them all, while the final build, the Deprived, has the opposite, has the most primal and basic setup you could ask for. So the mercenary has legion scimitars, which are pretty unique in that when you press triangle to two hand the weapon, it actually pulls out a duplicate scimitar in the other hand, but you still only actually have one scimitar, if that makes sense. There are some very fancy moves and combos you can do with them. With this class, I found myself just putting away my shield for good and just slicing up enemies with my dual blades. Now the deprived is really basic on the other hand. You start with no armor and just a club and shield. This shield actually has a bash attack, which is kind of cool. Not the most practical attack I've ever seen though. The club meanwhile has an insane weapon skill. It is a war cry, so it boosts attack, but it also allows you to perform a new consecutive strong attack right after you perform it. It looks crazy. Other than that though, the moveset isn't too great, because a lot of the attacks are slow jumping attacks, which aren't ideal. You'll mostly be using the plain old R1 until you pick up something else. Alright now, let's say you're a more experienced player, maybe you've heard about the soul level meta and about fully optimising your build and stuff like that, and perhaps you're here wondering what the most efficient starting class is, which is a totally different question. Firstly what you need to understand is that, let's say you wanted to make an optimised PvP build aiming at a soul level of around 120. We obviously don't yet know what the agreed level for PvP will be, it is too early to say, but let's just use 120 as an example. To make an optimised build, you need to have the least amount of wasted stats possible. It's that simple. So, and this is for more advanced players by the way. So essentially, you work out exactly what stats you want your final build to have, and then pick whichever starting class minimises the stats you don't want. I mean, as a really basic example, if you wanted to make a pure strength build, Obviously you don't want to have 16 points in dexterity, because that's just wasted points that could be put to better use elsewhere. Now if this is sounding complicated, don't worry, because people have already worked out what the most efficient starting class is, for most cases anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at this calculator here. Now I did not make this, I believe it was made by Jibbed, Bob and Brandon. Big thank you to Brandon for showing me this, but let's say we want to make a hypothetical quality build for PvP. That means roughly equal stats in strength and dexterity, so we put 40 in both, and fill out the rest of our stats how we want them, all while keeping within our soul level limit of 120. 
Oh, and by the way, obviously you pick what stats you want based on what spells, weapons and armor you want to use and what their requirements are, of course. Now, look which starting class is the most efficient. It's the Knight. With these stats we've chosen, we come to a 120 soul level with the Knight. All the other classes, with the same final stats, have wasted levels. Look at the Sorcerer, it will have a soul level of 135. That's 15 extra unnecessary levels. But let's say we wanted a different setup. Maybe we want to take 20 away from Dexterity and put it into Vigor, since we don't have much health at the moment, and having a good amount of health is important for PvP to do well. And we can see once again the Knight is the most efficient at giving you the stats you want at the lowest possible soul level. That's what build optimization is in a nutshell, you know, more for the hardcore players that want to have the competitive edge. Again, it's not really a huge deal, skill and experience play a much bigger part than the numbers game. I mean, if you've played for a while and seen some of the challenge runs that people do, you'll know that's true. But the takeaway is, if you're determined to get the most bang for your buck, the knight is probably among the best overall in most cases, for most builds anyway. I enjoyed making this and just chatting through what discoveries I've made in a more relaxed manner, you know. I will be doing funny videos and top 10s and all that kind of stuff soon, but I feel like in these early stages of the game's release, it would be good to just chat through stuff I learn as I play and discuss it with you guys, see what you have to say. So yeah, let me know if you want more videos like this, and let me know how you're finding Dark Souls 3 so far. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in the next one.